your dentist will have his favorites for the different procedures that your practice provides. It's important to become familiar with all types of burrs, though, in case they become needed. Dental decay is soft, diseased, dentin, and enamel tooth structure. When a tooth is filled, the decay is first accessed and excavated, and then the remaining weak enamel is removed. Once accessed using high-speed burrs, the soft decay is removed with both large round burrs and a slow-speed handpiece, and using hand instruments called spoon excavators, like the one shown here. Although many doctors develop a touch that enables them to entirely prepare a tooth for the restoration using the high-speed handpiece and burrs alone, some still elect to use hand instruments as well in refining the preparations. Hose, hatchets, chisels like those shown here, these can all safely cut and remove tight areas within the teeth, which is very important during some procedures like class II amalgams and inlays. The air water syringe tip provides water for washing, air for drying, or a blast of both combined for maximal cleansing of a cavity preparation during and after the removal of decay. Various materials are sometimes used as liners under fillings. They might be needed to help insulate the nerve if a filling will be deep or to provide a calming medicament. A calcium-based liner is used when a filling is extremely deep and then a stronger base is then placed over it. These bases and liners are usually two-part materials that set up in a short time after they're mixed together on a disposable pad or a glass slab. Special placing instruments are used. Periodontal probe-like instruments for painting calcium hydroxide, like the Dical brand, and then two-ended temporary placing instruments to load and pack the stronger base materials, like the IRM brand. A varnish liquid, called copalite, is used less frequently now to seal the dentin of a tooth from the metal of an amalgam filling. The copalite is painted inside the tooth with a cotton pellet in cotton pliers just before the amalgam is placed. It's never used with composites. The reusable Toffelmeyer retainer and a disposable metal matrix band act as a temporary wall holding the soft class 2 filling in place until it sets. Straight bands, like the one shown, are used on premolars. Bands with contours are used on molars. Though seemingly complex, the assembly becomes automatic with practice. Notice how flipping the band from the slot on one side to the other determines where it will work in the mouth, whether it be on the left or the right. Note that the Toffelmeyer and its band are placed with the widest opening of the band at the occlusal surface, much like a right side up snow cone cup. A small disposable wooden wedge is inserted between the teeth against the band before the filling is placed. This wedge presses the lowest extent of the band against the treated tooth, keeping filling materials from oozing out beneath the gums. It also separates the teeth slightly and creates a tighter contact between them after the wedge is removed. The amalgam capsule contains the filling material. It replaced the need to mix free mercury and amalgam powder together by hand. The capsule has a measured amount of filling material within it, depending on its external color, and also it contains a mixing pellet. The mercury is not released inside until the pellet breaks it loose during mixing. When placed in the amalgamator, the pellet combines the materials and begins the amalgam's setting process. The amalgam well, 
which is also sometimes called a dappen dish, holds a soft filling material and facilitates its loading into the amalgam carrier, a unique instrument that lets the dentist place the filling into the tooth. The condenser is a plunger-like instrument that is used to pack the silver filling down into the cavity preparation. Once completely filled, a carver is used to shape the filling, conforming it to the tooth surfaces before the filling sets. Burnishers are rounded instruments that smooth the soft dental materials, like thin layers of gold and amalgams that are not yet set, and may be used before or after carving the amalgam. The interproximal finishing knife is a thin bladed instrument that shaves over contoured fillings between the teeth down to a more normal anatomy. Some dentists use an explorer for this step. Improperly shaped fillings between the teeth hamper flossing severely. Only a high-speed burr on a high-speed handpiece can remove the excess of a filling that is fully hardened. Articulating forceps in red or blue articulating paper or ribbons help identify the bite relationship between a new filling and its opposing teeth. The bite ribbon marks high spots that must be carved down so that the filling won't break during early chewing or cause the tooth to become sensitive because of a bite discrepancy. Cotton pliers with or without locking handles are used with cotton pellets to dry moisten, clean, or otherwise treat small areas of the teeth. The cotton pliers can also help you retrieve gauze and cotton rolls from within the mouth. Make sure that the patient knows to wait several hours before chewing on any teeth that have been filled. Composite restorations require using many of the same instruments in placing amalgams, naturally the basic setup and any items that are needed for anesthesia. Before the procedure even begins, a shade guide is used to decide the color of the materials that are going to be used in the filling. If you decide later to use a shade guide, the teeth may have dried somewhat and taken on a lighter shade. So do this first. After the anesthetic is administered, a rubber dam may be used. Its placement is explained in detail in the film on endodontics or root canal therapy. The rubber dental dam is often needed to help keep the teeth clean and dry when bonding and placing composites in critical areas, especially in the back teeth. Its use greatly improves the chance of getting a satisfactory bond, which is so important in retaining the filling. Dental floss is used to secure the rubber dam and to prevent leakage, as well as to remove polish and help clean the interproximal areas after placement of the filling. Notice this floss's attachment to the rubber dam retainer. This is extremely important. If the retainer clamp inadvertently were to spring loose, the floss would help you retrieve it before it becomes lodged in the patient's throat. A lot of the tooth preparation in placing composite fillings is done with the high-speed handpiece and dental burrs. A slow-speed handpiece or spoon excavator is used to remove decay or fine-tune the preparation. Diamond impregnated burrs leave a roughness that some dentists like 
because it enhances the bond of the filling to the tooth. The calcium hydroxide base, like Dical brand, helps insulate the dentin from the acids used to roughen the surface to bond to. It also helps neutralize the acid. Calcium hydroxide is mixed on a small paper pad. The tip of a calcium hydroxide mixing and placing instrument, or even a periodontal probe, helps carry the paste to the cavity preparation. If the filling is being placed in between the teeth, a clear matrix band that the bright curing light can shine through is placed with a wedge holding it. The colored acid etchant cleans and roughens the enamel. It's placed using a cotton pellet and cotton pliers or with a special small brush. Be sure to apply it for the time recommended by its manufacturer. The air water syringe is then used along with the high volume suction to rinse and dry the area. Depending on the composite material used, a wetting agent is placed on the dry dentin and enamel with another cotton pellet or brush, following the product's instructions. This is usually also light cured. This is followed by the placement of layers of the filling material using either a syringe, a plastic placing instrument, or both. After the filling is set using the very bright curing light, the filling is shaped with fine tooth finishing burrs prior to its final polishing. Slow speed sandpaper discs and handheld paper strips can also be used to further shape and finish it. Final polishing is done with special pastes and rubber cups or brushes in a slow speed handpiece. And finally, the occlusion is checked using articulating paper. The patient may eat on composite restorations immediately. Remind her to be careful not to bite her lip or tongue since they may still be numb.